What is good everybody? Welcome to an Epic My Damn Toys video. I know, I know, it's not MDT Live episode 14. I said it would be up Monday or Tuesday, but unfortunately I just finished filming it last night. I finished it, it's around 900 to 1,000 pictures, and I finished it up and it will be up in the morning. I guarantee it. I'm going to edit it all day today, and it's going to be up in the morning, guys, and I'm very excited for you guys to see it. Episode 14 of MDT Live should be a banger, but today we have a special video for you guys to get you excited for the pick fed coming back tomorrow. Get you excited for the show. Get you ready for that thing, guys. Let's go ahead and get into it. Today's video is going to be every single MDT champion rank. Not just the MDT championship, obviously. We've only had three of those. We are talking about every champion that has ever existed in MDT across all the championships, across both brands of Vindication and MDT Live. I said it in the former video where we covered every champion ever. This video, we're going to rank them from worst to best. I'm going to cover their reign and, you know, tell you why they're ranked that way and just dive into everything in depth. So with that being said guys let's go ahead and start it off. I think there's like 26 or 27 total. So we're going to start with number 27 and work our way all the way up to number 1. So coming in at number 27 guys I had to go with the MDT World Tag Team Champions the first ever New Day and I went with these guys because they did not beat anybody to claim these championships. They were automatically crowned the champions at the MDT draft and they didn't ever successfully defend the championships in their first match matchup in their title defense that were going up against the Dudley Boys. The Shield invaded, beat the shit out of them, got a number one contendership, beat their ass at Blackout, and then beat their ass again on the show after Blackout to retain the championship. So they got absolutely dominated. They got embarrassed by the Shield on three different occasions, and uh, they were gifted the titles. They didn't even win them themselves. They are MDT World Team Tag Team Champions, though, on paper. Big E, Xavier, and Kofi Kingston, all under Freebird rule, but in my personal opinion they are the worst champions of all time in MDT history with two L's and, and they didn't do anything with the titles. Coming in at number 6 guys, we have another pair of MDT World Tag Team Champions. We're talking about Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose and if you guys remember, Dean Ambrose did uh, take on Seth Rollins that sold out for one half of the World Tag Team Championships and Roman Reigns helped Dean Ambrose defeat Seth Rollins and the next night, uh, or the same night, Roman Reigns turned on not only Seth, but Dean as well formed the bloodline with the Usos taking out Dean, and then the next night he laid down and gave the titles over to the Usos, so I went ahead and ranked them here because they were only champions for like a day, not even really 24 hours, and uh, or even a week. They, were, they weren't champions for very long at all. They gave up their titles and were beaten immediately and soundly, so they really didn't even do anything, but I had to rank them above the New Day because Dean Ambrose actually had to go through hell to get his half of the World Tag titles, and I felt like that needed something. Also, Roman Reigns did earn that by beating the New Day, so I figured they would go best here even though they weren't much of a team at all and uh, they were World Tag Team Champions at number 26. Coming in at number 25, guys, we have another pair of MDT World Tag Team titles. So I guess you can call these championships the worst championships in MDT because they I mean, the three of the worst champions of all time are for this championship. We do have a team that is ranked higher, but I did want to rank these here. Just because the Usos defeated Roman and Dean, you know, they did win the championships. They've looked good in their booking since winning the tag titles. They are going to defend their championship at Hell's Gate. We don't know who they're going to defend their titles against just yet. However, I think that they have looked better than the New Day and Roman and Dean as a team, and they defeated Roman and Dean, so I figured why not throw them in there at number 25. Up next, guys, at number 24, we have Sami Zayn as the Revolutionary Champion. This is very early MDT right here. You know, he was gifted the Revolutionary Championship by Brad at the MDT draft for Vindicator and I think that uh, he... He didn't really do anything. He lost in his very first title defense to The Miz at Blackout. I think he might have had a match on Vindication on like episode one or two where he, I think, defended the championship and then Ty Dillinger got involved and it kind of cost him and it led to a, a DQ and then he ended up losing later on. So he just really didn't do anything with the belt. He looked very weak as champion and it's not very memorable. You know, you don't think of Sami Zayn. I honestly forgot that he was even champion when I was creating my champions list. So that just tells you uh, how how his reign went as champion. So I have him ranked at number 24. Coming in at number 23 guys, we have an Iron Man champion and it is Rusev. You guys know that Rusev did just recently lose his Iron Man championship to Cody Rhodes and that was his first defense so he was not looking great as champion as well. You know, but he did do more than the rest of the people on the list. He won a triple threat ladder match 
at sold out to defeat Drew McIntyre and Cody Rhodes, so I figured that had to account for something. You know, he was running around with Rusev Day and Aiden English, still part of Rusev Day. They're a tag team on Vindication, and I figured, you know, when I created this countdown, I did take into consideration how they won the championship, so I figured, you know, a triple threat ladder match over Drew McIntyre and Cody Rhodes, the guy he lost the title to, I figured that made enough room for Rusev to get here at number 23. It wasn't a very long and memorable reign, but, you know, he did work his butt off to obtain the championship. And that leads me to number 22, guys, which is the current Iron Man champion, which is Cody Rhodes. You guys know Cody Rhodes just won the Iron Man championship versus Rusev at the Royal Rumble. And I know that, uh, you know, he just won the championship. We, he hasn't defended it just yet. He will be defending it at Hell's Gate, most likely against Johnny Gargano. We found out on Vindication. So uh, this is a very big time for Cody Rhodes. He did a whale of an effort there over Rusev. He looked great in that match. He defeated him in that chairs match, and he did claim it, but, you know, since we haven't seen him defend the title and he hasn't really done much with it since he won it, I have to rank him here at 22, just ahead of Rusev. Coming in at 21, guys, we have an extreme champion, and it is John Morrison. You guys know that he did defeat Bobby Lashley. He kicked him in the back of the skull. Bobby Lashley's head landed on the extreme championship, and John Morrison ended up pinning him and winning the extreme championship, but I think like a week later or a week or two later, he would end up getting assaulted by No Way Jose, and then, or it may have even been that same night. I think it was a week later. I'm not sure, but he did end up losing the championship to Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens found him passed out or knocked unconscious in the backstage area, pinned him to win, and, you know, John Morrison did a little bit to win that championship, and, you know, he, he didn't have it for very long, but he did take out Bobby Lashley, and he did win that extreme championship, so I did want to gift him the number 21 spot here, and he did put on a great effort at that uh, Royal Rumble in the extreme championship match, even though that doesn't have anything to do with it, I still wanted to put him here at 21. Coming in at number 20 guys we do have a United States Championship here and it is Dean Ambrose when he was a part of the Shield he obviously did beat Shelton Benjamin to win the United States Championship on MDT Live he would then go on to lose the championship to Shelton Benjamin I'm not, why the hell is he ranked number 20 what the hell is that I don't know if I would put this man at number 20 I think I should replace him and Rusev so replace put Rusev here put John Morrison back at 23 put Dean Ambrose at 22, put Rusev at 21, and then put Cody Rhodes at 20. Do that. That's that's better. Dean Ambrose, he, he didn't do anything. What the hell was I thinking? Coming in at number 19, guys, we do have Drew McIntyre as the Iron Man champion, and he looked pretty good as champ. You know, he took on Braun Strowman. He ended up retaining the championship there. It was due to Kane interference, but he did win the championship there. He ended up retaining it versus Cody Rhodes in a ladder match on Vindication. That match actually ended up getting thrown out because of Braun Strowman interference, but Drew McIntyre did tote it. He he made a big he made a lot of momentum as he first arrived. Got the championship over Braun Strowman, who had not been pinned or anything like that. And uh, I wanted to put Drew McIntyre here at number 19. Coming in at number 18, guys, we have the current United States Champion Jack Swagger. And you guys know that he was assaulting Shelton Benjamin. He ended up beating him one on one at the Royal Rumble. He overcame Shelton Benjamin, and he he looks good, man. He came out great. He he looked dominant in that performance and. He, uh, he he came out on top, man. He came out on top as the masked man. And then, you know, now he's looking like the president of the United States, looking good over there on MDT Live. And I'm enjoying his reign so far. You know, he hasn't defended the title yet. I'm sure he will at Hell's Gate. But uh, he's, lo he's looked great thus far. And he comes in at the number 18 spot. Coming to number 17, guys, we do have the current MDT champion, Roman Reigns. Just won the championship at the Royal Rumble over CM Punk and John Cena. He did not pin John Cena, but he did pin, he did pin CM Punk and he did win the MDT Championship. Very big win there for Roman Reigns. And it is his first singles championship in MDT. He is now an MDT champion and a world tag team champion. Not a two-time, but a one-time because uh, they were under the... Because he never lost the title and then regained it. So he is not a two-time world tag team champion, but he is a double champion in MDT history. And uh, he's looked great in his reign so far. He will defend it in the Elimination Chamber. So that'll really say something about his reign if he can retain that in the big old Elimination Chamber. But for now, he he rests at number 17. Coming in at number 16, guys, we do have Bobby Lashley and he is on this list right here at the Extreme Champion. He actually interfered in the Money in the Bank ladder match. Genius way to win the championship right here, which I had to give him credit 
and four here in the countdown at number 16. While uh, he was running around throwing kids around the backstage area like Heath Slater and, and guys of that nature, um, he does come in at number 16 because he, he came in the Money in the Bank matchup. You know, the, the Extreme Championship's always on the line 24-7, so RVD was incapacitated in the Money in the Bank ladder match, and he came out there and pinned him while mid-match and pretty much just stole the championship from under RVD's nose like a genius. So Bobby Lashley comes in at number 16 like a boss. Coming in at 15, guys, we have the first ever elite champion in Finn Balor right here. And you can say, you know, he did win the championship off of Bullet Club interference, but it was a fatal four-way match, and it was, you know, a big-time moment. It was a historical moment on vindication. Became the first ever elite champion. In his first defense, though, he did lose to Kenny Omega. However, it took the full Bullet Club to take this man out to win that matchup for Kenny Omega. It was a great match. Well, well, you know, well documented that it was a banger matchup for the time being in the pick fed's history. And, uh, you know, he's the first ever champion. I felt like the middle of the lineup was great and fair to Finn Balor. You know, not the greatest champion ever. He, had, he, he really didn't get a chance, but, you know, his career was short-lived in MDT. But you know what? He will always go down as the first ever elite champion, and we will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have to just remember him that way. Coming in at 14, guys, we do have, oh my God. Coming in at 14, guys, we do have Marty Skrull, the current revolutionary champion. He did overcome Adam Cole in a really nice matchup on Vindication, and he has held the title ever since, has not had a title defense just yet, but he should be, he might defend it at Hell's Gate. We'll have to see what goes down on Vindication. You know, he's been in trouble with the Wyatt Colt as of late, as the whole Bullet Club really has, and uh, he, he looked great in that matchup to overcome Adam Cole and dethrone him, and he and he's held the title for a little bit now, so you know, he like, when, I know just because they don't defend their championships on TV, on the weekly television shows, guys, I like to think that they defend them at live events that I don't post. You know, I'm, I'm running through little live events in my head, and you know, they're defending the championship here and there at live events, winning matches and things of that nature. So don't ever think, oh, they're not doing anything canon. They're still doing stuff canon at live events and winning matches and defending the championship. It may not be completely canon in the record books, but it is still in my head. Coming into 13, guys, we do have Adam Cole, baby, and I put him just ahead of Marty Skrull. You could flip them back and forth. You know, if you want to put Marty Skrull at 13, go ahead. If you want to put Adam Cole at 13, go ahead. But I personally went with Adam Cole. You know, he did have to win a few matches to get the number one contendership. Marty Skrull kind of just walked out there and kind of fought with it, and Kenny Omega kind of gifted it to him, which I guess you don't have to really take it into consideration. Also, Marty Skrull cheated to beat Adam Cole. He did a pile driver onto the Money in the Bank briefcase, so I took that into consideration as well. But Adam Cole, revolutionary champion, while it was short-lived. He uh, he had a decent little run there, and I am going to put him at number 13. Coming in at number 12, guys, we have Rhino, and I know this is hilarious. He's just legs and a head scan. It's because I had to use some of his parts for a custom, but he was the MDT Extreme Champion at one point, and he defeated RVD on the first ever MDT Live episode. He speared RVD through the lockers, and he ended up winning the MDT Extreme Championship, and then him and RVD had a sanctioned rematch on MDT Live episode number two, and he did come up short, but it was a great effort. It was a hellacious matchup, and Rhino was pretty badassery, man. He was running around fighting with kids and just beating the hell out of them. So I have him ranked ahead of all these guys so far. Coming in at number 12, and yeah, I need a new Rhino figure. Coming in at number 11, guys, we have the current MDT Extreme Champion Kevin Owens, and the reason he is sitting here is because he is pretty much I, I'd say he probably put on probably the best match in MDT history at the Royal Rumble in the Fatal 4-Way Extreme Championship match. He overcame Bobby Trashley, John Morrison, and No Way Jose in that matchup, and he also defeated John Morrison to win the championship in the backstage area, which I do give points for if you find somebody incapacitated or pick an opportune time to, you know, get that championship, take a chance on them, then I have to rank you higher here in the countdown. I just like that part of it. You know, it shows that you got some wit about yourself, shows you got some ball sack there, and uh, he, he put on a great matchup, and you know, he's still running around MDT Live with that extreme championship. We should find out on 14, you know, what's going to happen. Is he going to show up at the arena? He was recovering last week from those injuries at the Royal Rumble, so hopefully he'll be back in action on MDT Live 14, and we'll have to see, but I'm enjoying his reign so far, and he's looking like a boss. Coming in at number 10, guys, we have a man that is a two-time MDT United States Champion, one of the only double champions 
ever in MDT history. I think him and RVD are the only ones to ever win a title twice. RVD is a two-time extreme champion, and Shelton Benjamin is a two-time United States champion, which I did take into consideration when making this list, so he does come in at number 10. And his first championship was gifted to him, so you know it's not the greatest, but his second one, he was getting assaulted by the Shield in the backstage area multiple weeks in a row, and he ended up beating Dean Ambrose at Money in the Bank in a tables match to win back the United States Championship, so I took I th I took that into consideration, and uh, he, he proved that he's got a sack on him, so I put him at number 10. Not the greatest reign, but not the worst. Coming in at number 9, guys, we have The Revival, and I know they really didn't do much with the MDT Tag Team Championships, and they never even held these specific championships because the Young Bucks took them off them. However, uh, they were the longest reigning champions ever in MDT history for a while. I don't know if they still are or if Kenny Omega surpassed them just yet. He probably did. But uh, they were the longest reigning champions ever and, you know, they defend them at live events and things of that nature. And since you have the longest reigning, you know, reign ever, I had to get, take that into consideration and you have to be a good champ if you, you know, you never lose the championships. You may not defend them all the time, but you, you know, if you, if you never lose them, then you gotta be accounted for something. So I put them at number 9. You know, not the highest on the list, but definitely in the top 10. I felt like that was a fair ranking for them. And the Revival are out with neck injuries right now, so I guess we'll see them when they get back, if they ever do return. You know, you never know. Coming into number 8, guys, we have the Monster Among Men. We have Braun Strowman, the first ever Iron Man champion, and he was booked like a freaking boss, guys, okay? So he defeats Kane. He defeated Kane in Kane's only matchup in MDT history at Black out. He looked like a boss in that matchup. He then defended the championship versus Drew McIntyre. He did lose this matchup. However, he won he lost due to Kane interference and beating the crap out of him. And Braun has looked like a boss. He's destroyed things as champion. He was walking around MDT like a freaking animal. And I mean, I think that he had a solid reign. You know, it wasn't the greatest. Again, this was early in MDT history. So, you know, I'm sure that if he was in the pick fed now, he'd probably even look more like a boss. But, you know, we haven't seen him since MDT sold out when the gloved hand pulled him under the ring so I don't know when the hell this man's going to return who knows what's happening but as far as I'm concerned he is the 8th best champion in MDT history. Coming in at number 7 ladies and gentlemen we have the Bucks of Youth, the Young Bucks, the MDT World Tag Team Champions, the MDT Tag Team Champions right here looking very good current MDT Tag Team Champions they did defeat the Revival in a Tornado Tag Match at MDT Sold Out the following night they came out in a Tornado Tag Table Elimination Match and defeated the Revival putting them on the shelf and winning their championships looking like total bosses in both of those matchups and they will defend their titles against the Wyatt Colt at MDT Hell's Gate so that's going to be a big deal there if they can retain those championships and take those championships into My Damn Nation we will have to see about that one but they have looked like bosses so far and I know that they really have it like it makes it hard to defend the championships week in and week out on MDT Live or Vindication because you have to think like we're when we're building to certain shows if we're building to things like you know Hell's Gate that's got Elimination Chambers or Money in the Bank where you've got like ladder matches and we're having qualifying matches and things of that nature, Royal Rumble, it's really hard to get other matches onto the card. So that is why a lot of these champions don't get to defend their titles as often, which is why I mentioned the live events, which I probably should start posting on Instagram, doing a little bit of stuff so that, you know, we can update some stuff. But, you know, it is what it is. Young Bucks are number seven. Coming in at number six, guys, we have the MDT World Tag Team Champions, The Shield, but specifically Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins. Now, when I say this, these are these are easily the best MDT World Tag Team Champions of all time. Roman, Seth, and Dean formed on MDT Live episode number two. They came out, they beat the shit out of Kofi Kingston and the New Day, the, the current MDT World Tag Team Champions at that time. Beat the hell out of them. Ran the Dudley Boys out of the building, never to return. Haven't seen the Dudley Boys since. Then they went to blackout, kicked their ass again, won the MDT World Tag Team Championships. Next night on MDT Live, defeated the championships again and beat them in a rematch on MDT Live and then the only reason they lost the championship is because they imploded and Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns and Dean Ambrose all got into it. You know, Dean and Seth had their deal. Roman was behind the scenes forming with the Usos getting out of there with the Shield and that's the only reason they ever lost the Tag Team Championship. So if they never imploded, they'd probably still to this day be the MDT World Tag Team Champions. Coming in at number five, guys, we have the first ever 
MDT champion. You guys know who it is. It is the rated R superstar, the ultimate opportunist, Edge. And this man overcame four men, AJ Styles, CM Punk, and Roman Reigns in the first ever MDT Live in the main event. Captured the MDT championship in that fatal four-way ladder match. Epic matchup. Not only that, he defended the championship against Randy Orton at Blackout. Looked like a boss. As champion, he was the interim general manager. Looking like a boss as well. Booking great matchups. Taking care of MDT Live before ultimately losing the title to John Cena at Money in the Bank and then turning heel and forming with Randy Orton to form rated RKO and that is where he is right now but we will never forget the first ever MDT champion what a great run and he comes in at number five on the list coming in at number four guys we do have a two-time champion here and you guys will see it is the two-time extreme champion RVD also the first ever Mr. Money in the Bank who did get put on the shelf you know we don't know who the hell ran him over in the parking lot but that doesn't discount the fact that this man is the fourth best champion all time in MDT history. The man came out there and uh, he was a beast, man. He was defending the championship left and right, defeated Rhino to win it back. He defeated Jack Swagger in a great championship match. He defeated Sandman in a great championship match. This man was just putting his body on the line week in, week out. And he was actually in contention for, you know, Superstar of the Month and the Week multiple times. Just a freaking animal. And he, he was destroying it, man. So I had to give it to RVD. Hopefully he can return soon, man. We don't know. We don't know anything about the man. He, he was nearly murdered on our televisions. And he is the fourth best champion ever. Coming in at number three, guys, we have the revolutionary champion, The Miz. Yes, ma'am. You guys should have seen this one coming. I mean, this man was on that Bullet Club initiation tour just taking out talent after talent after talent after competitor after competitors beating the hell out of everybody man he was just knocking guys off I think he was like five or six and oh in his career at one point just macking on kids trying to get into the bullet club and then it all turned out to be a swerve and then Marty Skrull entered the bullet club and no one saw it coming and he flacked him in the face with the umbrella and Adam Cole beat the hell out of him as well leading to Marty Skrull and Adam Cole feuding and Miz kind of faded off into the sunset but we missed the Miz and you know one day maybe he'll get back to that promise you you know, him and the Hurricane were a tag team there for a minute, feuding with Kevin Owens and then the Bullet Club, and just stuff, and then just farts, and you know, it's, it's just been a long road, but The Miz is definitely the third best champion in my personal opinion, and maybe, just maybe, he could get that championship back one day. Coming in at number two, guys, I think that it's pretty obvious who the top two are, and let's just go ahead and break it down right now. Number two is the current Elite Champion, and that is Kenny Omega. I don't think you could put anybody else here at the number two spot. You know, he's the longest running elite champion. I think that you know, whatever championship you win, I think that can add to the prestige of it because it is the top prize. The elite championship, the MDT championship, the two top prizes and Kenny Omega is the longest reigning elite champion. He's defended the title many times. I know he hasn't defended as often as you'd like, but I think he's like 4-0 in his career and he entered the Rumble match, eliminated a bunch of people in that. He's just been book really strong. Now he has to defend the elimination, he has to defend the elite championship in the elimination chamber, which could also increase his stock. So that That'll be a really nice match for him if he can escape the damn thing with the title still around his waist. But we'll have to see about that at Hell's Gate. And uh, we are still looking forward to the Vindication Go Home show going into Hell's Gate. This should be coming very soon after MBT Live 14 tomorrow. And the greatest, the number one champion in the history of MDT, guys, is none other than the GOAT himself, the MDT champion, Jonathan Chris Shaw Cena. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. I just made that up. But John Cena is the number one of all time. I think he's the best champion of all time in my personal opinion. Am I a little biased? Probably, but just hear me out. Just hear me out for a second and I'll get into it, okay? This man came out of nowhere, you know, demanded a championship with Edge, and he went into MDT Money in the Bank, defeated Edge, won the championship, had to survive a heel turn by Edge with it by cracking him over the skull there. The next night on MDT Live, he had to not only defend the championship in a no rule, a no DQ match. He had to put Edge to a, bun a bunch of hell. He had to go through hell to, you know, retain his championship. He had to overcome a cashing in RVD. He had to overcome Randy Orton coming out there and interfering in the matchup and RKOing him and trying to take him out. After that, he ended up defeating Dolph Ziggler at MDT sold out. And then he ended up going into the MDT Royal Rumble where he almost won the championship again, retaining his championship. But Roman Reigns came out of nowhere, threw him out of the ring, and he was 
would have retained. Imagine if it was CM Punk versus John Cena alone. John Cena would have won that, and John Cena has never been pinned or submitted in his MDT career. Therefore, he is the greatest champion, and he's the longest reigning MDT champion of all time. So I had to put him here at number one, and I think you guys will agree with that. If you don't, let me know who your favorite champion is or who you think the best champion in the world is. I would say that these three are the top three, though. I think it's easy to say. I would love to know down in the comment section below, though, what you guys think. Please let me know, guys. But I hope you guys did enjoy this ranking system. Again, MDT Live 14 is coming tomorrow. I'm going to get started editing on that, and you guys will see that in the morning. So get shopping, get ready, get freaking ready to go. It's going to be a great episode. We're on our way to Hell's Gate. We're going to get there. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.